Greetings YouTube and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and in this video I want to do my best to try to explain to you the back angle again because I get many questions concerning this. So what I'm talking about when I'm referencing the back angle is this gap right here, right here at the saddle, is thicker. There's a wider gap right here and it gets thinner as it approaches the fretboard. And in this case here, I go from uh, 5 eighths of an inch here down to a little bit more than 3 eighths of an inch here. And that's just the example for this box. Okay, don't run with those numbers, but for this particular box, this is the way it turned out. 5 eighths over here, 3 eighths here, difference of 2 eighths, so it's about, about a quarter of an inch fall from the length of the box, from the saddle to the fretboard. Now this is how I achieve that. While I'm building the neck, um, I have this plane here, the plane of the top of the fretboard, and consequently the plane of the strings, and that's the same plane as the bottom of this heel here. The only thing that's changed here is that I've cut out more wood here, so I cut it at an angle and again, that angle is going to be about a quarter of an inch fall from the length of the, of, the, of this heel here. Uh, let's see here. See if you can see what these numbers are here. I don't. I can't see. But I know that it's the difference is probably about. Maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. So it's a subtle thing, very subtle thing. Um, and so when you put the cigar box, when you put put it all together, right, you'll see that this part here is lower, right. So I have I have essentially two different angles. I have this angle here, the angle of the plane of the top of the cigar box, and I also have the plane of the strings, so that the strings are going to come up. And actually you get higher and higher and higher as you approach the saddle. And what that does is it gives you more room for your fingers to, to, so you're not banging the top of the cigar box. For me, it's a very subtle thing, but I think it adds a lot of uh, feel and it gives the player a lot more uh, room and freedom and action to, to, um, to attack the string. So it's a very subtle thing, but I feel as though it's a very, very, very important thing. Um, I, I'll show you uh, one more example here, and that is this box here. So this box is being built right now, and it's got the back angle built into it. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but I can kind of see it right off the bat. Got this angle here, and I got this angle here. And again, how I've done this is I've got thicker here, the underside of the fretboard, to the where the saddle's gonna be. And how I accommodate that on the box is I have two different thicknesses of shims. Up here in the front, my shim is about uh, eighth of an inch here. I don't know if you can see that guy. This one here is about an eighth of an inch. This is the front again. And here's the back. You can see the back is obviously about three eighths of an inch, even more than that. So, again, a difference of about a quarter of an inch from front to back. And it has to be higher on this side here, right? Because it's going to push. You want the top of the inside of the box to be flat, because you want the top. You want the top of the inside of that neck to be flush with the underside of the box. So I understand it's confusing. I understand that it's a conceptual thing that you have to kind of come to grips with in your mind. Here's here's another one. It's going to be thinner in the front. My gap here in the front is going to be a little over five eighths of an inch here. 
and my height in the back here is going to be just over an inch and that's going to accommodate this neck Again, very subtle, very subtle, but very, very important in my opinion. And again, I borrowed this idea from the stringed instruments, the bows and the, the cellos and the violins, and also the Gibson style guitars. Look at a Gibson Les Paul or a, a ES-335 and you'll notice that you have this higher action in the back here next to the saddle and increasingly lower and lower action until you're right over the fretboard it's really low action so that's it my friends i hope you can understand that uh, again if you have any questions by all means hit me up and i will do my best to try to again to explain it but i figure if you can see it uh, pictures may be worth a thousand words so anyhow good luck with your back angles